Okay, this is just a very brief sort of overview of the process of protein synthesis. Now obviously you're going to need to learn this in a lot more detail, so I'll do a couple of more detailed videos about protein synthesis. Um, but let's just go through what we already know from having done the uh, cell structure. So what you know is that inside of your nucleus, let me just draw a little bit of a nuclear membrane there, you have chromosomes, and yes we know they occur in pairs but we're not going to worry about that just yet, and that a chromosome is composed of DNA, and of course that is wound round these proteins called histones. We've also got histones forming our chromosomes. And um, what do we know about DNA? What we know is that it carries its codes for proteins. So, a gene codes for a protein. So, the other thing that we know from doing cells is that out here in the cytoplasm we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum which has embedded into it these ribosomes and they're the things that carry out protein synthesis. So they're involved some way in protein synthesis. And again, just going on what we know about ribosomes, these are made of something called rRNA, and again, associated with protein. And when we did cells, we said that these pores allowed large molecules like mRNA out of the nucleus. So what is this mRNA stuff? Where does it come from? Why do we need it? And what has the code being in here got to do with the proteins being synthesized out here? Um, so this is just what we're going to just have a brief sort of look at in this video. So, DNA, what do we know? It's double-stranded. And we know that these strands are complementary. And they're complementary. And base pairs are held by hydrogen bonds. And we also know from doing DNA replication that those hydrogen bonds can break and expose those bases. Now obviously this now gives us a mechanism for copying the code. So our first stage, the DNA is kind of really stuck inside the nucleus, but the RNA can get out. We know that RNA is a polynucleotide. And we know that it's single-stranded. And we know that it doesn't have T in it, it has U instead. So, the first stage is the sort of copying stage. So the first stage of protein synthesis is to copy the code and we call that transcription. And I think if you think about it, you think, hmm, we could just make a complementary molecule of our single-stranded RNA. And we're going to call that mRNA. Now the M stands for messenger. 
So that kind of, you know, it does what it says on the tin, really. It carries the, mes the message out from the DNA and into the cytoplasm. So what do we know about uh, ribosomal RNA, then this rRNA? What we know is that uh, these the ribosomes are assembled in the nucleolus. Again, that's from what we did in cells. And that they have a large and small subunit. So effectively, this is quite a complexly single-stranded uh, polynucleotide, like all RNAs are. Again, it's got no T, it's got U instead, but now it's kind of folded up around a protein uh, to make this little blobby uh, structure, large and small subunit, with a little bit of a gap between them. Um, we know that this is where our uh, proteins are assembled. So, our messenger RNA is actually going to lie across that snowman, like a little scarf, and the, uh, the large subunit is actually going to form a little site of attachment for mRNA and another sort of RNA. Our final sort of RNA that, that's involved in this story, and this is the one that you haven't come across, what do we know about making proteins? We know that they're made of amino acids. And we, need to, and we know that the sequence is important. Because that determines the way in which it folds up and the way in which it forms these other structures. So, uh, one thing that you may have done at school is that this code is in triplets. So it's in triplets on the DNA, it's in triplets on the mRNA, and one, we're going to call it a codon, because it's on our RNA, codes for one specific amino acid. So again, complementary base pairing is going to be important and our final sort is the one that's going to carry the um, amino acids. Now I like to draw it like this. It's actually far more of a sort of twisted structure. So if you can imagine um, something that if you sort of spread it out, looks a bit like this. Uh, we've got sort of complementary base pairs holding that shape in place, but then it's all been sort of twisted round. Uh, you could probably make quite a nice one out of wire. Now, the key thing about tRNA, T, RNA, this is transfer RNA, and its job is to transfer amino acids. So at one end, it carries an amino acid. I'm just going to abbreviate that to AA, so it's got an attachment site for the amino acid. And at the other end, it's got three unpaired bases. Called an anti-codon. Now, this amino acid is specific to the anti-codon. So your anticodon happens to be you know, AAG, that means it will only carry the amino acid that matches that anticodon. And we don't need to know any details of how that process is happening. But effectively, we've now got two stages. We've got the copy and code stage in the nucleus, transcription. We make some mRNA, which can escape the nucleus and come out to the cytoplasm. And we're gonna, what we're going to end up with is a sequence of amino acids in the right order, dependent on the code on the mRNA, which of course depends on the DNA code, and we're going to bring those amino acids, transfer them from the cytoplasm to that amino acid sequence via this transfer RNA. And that whole process is called a translation. So, I know 
make two separate videos. One will be on transcription and one will be on translation. But always in the back of your mind you've got to have that idea that as an overview you've got transcription followed by translation and what the RNA's uh, role is in each of those things.